Hey everyone, Alana here. Let me ask you something. Have you ever been standing in front of a SCADA system that's supposed to be talking to your field devices, but instead you're getting nothing but communication errors? Or maybe you're trying to figure out why your water treatment plant uses DNP3 while your manufacturing line runs on Modbus, and frankly, you're not even sure what the difference is? Well, you're in the right place. After 35 years of dealing with these protocols in everything from power plants to water systems to manufacturing floors, I'm going to break down the three big players you absolutely need to understand. Modbus, DNP3, and IEC 60870. And more importantly, I'm going to tell you when to use each one, how to troubleshoot them, and what I wish someone had told me when I was starting out. Now before we dive in, let me set the stage here. Think of these communication protocols, like different languages, that your SCADA system and your field devices use to talk to each other. Just like you wouldn't speak French to someone who only understands Spanish, you need to make sure your devices are all speaking the same protocol language. The good news is, once you understand the basics of each one, you'll know exactly which tool to reach for in any given situation. Let's start with Modbus, and I call this the workhorse because it's been around since 1979 and it just keeps going. Dick Morley and the folks at Modicon, which later became Schneider Electric, created this thing. And honestly, it's probably the most widely used protocol in industrial automation today. Modbus comes in three main flavors, and this is where a lot of people get confused. You've got Modbus RTU, which runs over serial communications like RS-485. Then there's Modbus ASCII, which is basically the same thing, but uses ASCII characters instead of binary. And finally, Modbus TCP, which runs over Ethernet networks. Now here's what I love about Modbus. It's simple, almost stupidly simple. It uses a master-slave architecture, which means one device, your SCADA system, acts as the master and asks questions, while the field devices act as slaves and respond when asked. No chatty devices, no unsolicited messages, just clean question and answer communication. Let me show you what this looks like in practice. Say I have a temperature transmitter on Modbus address 5, and I want to read the current temperature. My SCADA system sends a message that basically says, Hey device 5, give me the value in holding register 4001. The device responds with the temperature reading, simple as that. The beauty of Modbus is that it's an open protocol. No licensing fees, no proprietary nonsense. If you've got a device that speaks Modbus, it'll talk to any other Modbus device, regardless of manufacturer. That's why you see it everywhere from small package units to massive industrial installations. But here's where Modbus shows its age, security. There isn't any. Well, not built in anyway. If you're running Modbus TCP over an Ethernet network, anyone who can access that network can potentially read or write to your devices. So you better have your network security locked down tight. Now let's talk about DNP3, Distributed Network Protocol version 3. This one was specifically designed for the utility industry back in the 1990s, and you can tell. Everything about DNP3 screams, I was built for power systems and there's good reason for that. Unlike Modbus, DNP3 is much more sophisticated. It supports both polled communication, where the master asks for data, and unsolicited reporting, where field devices can send important information without being asked. This is huge in power systems where you need to know about a fault or alarm immediately, not when the next polling cycle happens to come around. Here's something that really sets DNP3 apart, time synchronization. In the power grid, knowing exactly when something happened isn't just nice to have, it's critical for understanding system events and coordinating protection schemes. DNP3 has built-in time sync capabilities that can keep all your devices synchronized to within milliseconds. DNP3 also handles communication disruptions much better than Modbus. If you lose communication with a remote site, and trust me, this happens in the utility world, DNP3 devices can store events locally and then upload them in the correct time sequence once communication is restored. Try doing that with basic Modbus. The protocol also supports multiple data types in a single message. 
You can request analog values, digital status points, and counter values all in one transaction. This makes DNP3 much more efficient for complex systems with lots of different data types. Now, DNP3 does have built-in security features, but, and this is important, most implementations I've seen in the field don't use them. The secure authentication version of DNP3 exists, but it requires more processing power and complexity that a lot of older systems just can't handle. So don't assume your DNP3 system is secure just because the protocol supports it. Finally, let's talk about IEC 60870. This is actually a family of protocols, but when most people say IEC 60870, they're usually talking about IEC 60870-5104, which is the TCP IP version. This protocol started life in Europe and has become the standard for power system automation over there. IEC 60870-5-104 is similar to DNP3 in a lot of ways. It supports both polled and spontaneous communication, it handles time synchronization, and it's designed specifically for power system applications. But there are some key differences that matter in the real world. One big difference is in how they handle data addressing. DNP3 uses a straightforward point-based addressing system, while IEC 60870-5-104 uses what's called information object addressing. It's more flexible in some ways, but it can also be more complex to configure correctly. IEC 60870-5-104 also has some nice features for system maintenance. It includes built-in test and diagnostic functions that can help you verify communication without affecting live data. That's something I really appreciate when I'm trying to troubleshoot a system without causing an outage. All right, so now you understand what each protocol does. But how do you choose which one to use? Let me give you the practical guidance that comes from actually implementing these things. If you're working in manufacturing, process control, or building automation, Modbus is probably your best bet. It's simple, reliable, and everything speaks it. Need to connect a temperature sensor to your SCADA system? Modbus RTU over RS-485. Want to read data from a dozen different PLCs on your plant network? Modbus TCP will do the job beautifully. For power systems, especially transmission and distribution, DNP3 is the standard in North America. The utilities have standardized on it, the equipment manufacturers support it well, and it handles the specific requirements of power system monitoring and control. If you're working for an electric utility or a large industrial facility with its own substation, you're probably going to be dealing with DNP3. IEC 60870-5-104 is dominant in European power systems and is gaining ground in other parts of the world. If you're working on international projects or with European equipment manufacturers, you'll likely encounter this protocol. It's also becoming more common in renewable energy applications, particularly wind and solar farms. Now let me share some troubleshooting wisdom that'll save you hours of headaches. First rule, always check your basics first. I can't tell you how many times I've been called out for a protocol problem that turned out to be a loose wire or wrong baud rate setting. For Modbus, pay attention to your device addressing and register mapping. Modbus has this quirky thing where register numbers don't always match the actual addresses used in the protocol. A lot of confusion comes from this. And remember, Modbus RTU is very sensitive to timing. If your cable runs are too long or you've got electrical noise, you'll get communication errors. With DNP3, watch out for data link layer confirmations. If devices aren't properly configured to send or expect confirmations, you'll get communication but the data might not be reliable. Also, check your event buffer sizes. If a device fills up its event buffer during a communication outage, you might lose data. For IEC 60870-5-104, the biggest gotcha I see is time synchronization configuration. If devices expect time sync but don't receive it, they might stop reporting spontaneous events. Also, Pay attention to the common address of ASDU settings. Get that wrong and devices won't communicate at all. Here's the bottom line. These protocols are tools, 
and like any tools, you need to pick the right one for the job. Modbus for simplicity and universal compatibility. DNP3 for North American power systems and applications that need sophisticated event handling. IEC 608-70-5-104 for European power systems and international projects. The key is understanding not just how these protocols work, but why they were designed the way they were. That understanding will guide you to make the right choices and troubleshoot problems more effectively. That's a wrap on SCADA communication protocols. If this helped clarify things for you, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more practical control systems content. And hey, drop a comment and let me know which protocol you work with most. I'd love to hear about your real world experiences with these systems. Until next time, this is Alana reminding you to always think safety first and keep learning.